Hi there, I'm David Floyd and I'll be talking about my proposed methodology titled The Shadow Dev Method, along with the project I intend to apply the method to. The intention is that this methodology assists solo developers like myself that have no real form of process to follow. And while it is kind of explicit in its use, it should offer insights for anyone interested in game development. First, I'd like to say that it is an original proposal and takes what knowledge I've gained in the past two years of project management classes and attempts to consolidate that with my last 10 years in game development academia. This is to create a method for myself and others attempting the tour de force that is solo game development. It's created with the whole spectrum of game development in mind and offers vision of an overall game idea before its implementation. This is seen in the form of diligent planning and offers structure to a process that people specialising in a singular field may overlook. It's also named after Shadow Data Systems, which has some relations, but in the method, the shadow is quite literally the developers. So someone wanting to completely deliver a game by themselves has to be capable of doing all the roles on the left, while arguably only possessing the item on the right. That's a lot of specializations that most developers can relate with. There's probably a few more I missed, but these are basically the essential roles for creating an original game and releasing it in the hopes of financial success. No one is going to be good at all of them, and the method doesn't expect that you are. That's unreasonable. It's too many hats to wear, and the skill sets of some of these roles are highly perishable. But your shadow will always be there, and a few processes take advantage of that, which may seem odd, but bear with me. First, as a part of the curriculum, we had to include a project with the intention of applying the method to it. I present Starload, which serves as a desirable model for the shadow dev method to be enacted upon, as its development team is, well, me. Starload is defined as an incremental, story-driven game that sees a protagonist stranded on an obscure planet, having nothing but a habitable pod and a material generator to repurpose native elements, the player is expected to acquire enough resources to eventually create a factory. From that factory, a further level of play is enabled that allows the player to create mining ships to harvest orbital resources and allows operations on other planets. Progressing further into the game sees the factory mechanic applied at a planetary system level where prodigious amounts of materials can be used to create star loaders. These gigantic vessels absorb stars and convert them into dark matter, which offers the protagonist the opportunity to eventually return home. The key objective of Starload is to have a completed project that can be debuted with a minimal amount of external assistance utilised to finish the project. Secondly, the project's inception is fundamental in developing the shadow dev method, Additionally, it explores the appropriate level of methodology use required by a single developer to create a high-quality game within a feasible amount of time. Anyway, regarding the previously mentioned ideas of a developer talking to their shadow. First, the shadow triad. Three questions that are at the root of the method and should be asked routinely during the development cycle. Can you do it to the required standard? If you can't, do you have the ability to learn it? And what happens next? The first question identifies what the developer is doing, and if they are capable of doing it to a standard which they deem acceptable. This in turn asks the fundamental question of if they can't do it, do they have the capacity to learn it? The alternative for if they can't is addressed later in the method. Following this check is a holistic question that should be viewed with every developmental field in mind. The pragmatic shadow. During the processes where this is suggested, explaining each idea allowed and talking through a task is recommended. Even better if ideas can be discussed with a human being, if one can be found, but the developer's shadow is just as useful. This method of self-explanation is scientifically beneficial and can assist in identifying shortcomings that may not be evident when internalizing ideas. Last of these processes is the shadow pitch, which is a suggestion on how a developer should sell their game at an individual that is unfamiliar with their work. In a real world scenario, Gamers that often describe games to friends never describe it by saying it's a fast-paced first-person shooter that has 13 different weapons and takes you through a Martian environment where you, a vengeful marine, take on hordes of satanic monsters. It is more colloquial than that, and it's got very specific points that gamers tend to focus on. So something like, oh man, this game is ridiculously good, the soundtrack's all heavy metal and you get to rampage through hell with a shotgun. There's also this melee system that destroys demons. And there's this massive gun, but you've got to see it for yourself. That kind of familiarity used as a pitch is a suitable method for expressing the personality of a game and can help detach a developer from the role of creator 
and perceive their work as a player of their intended audience. The method assumes the developer isn't working for a client, because solo games tend to be projects of passion, though it could be rectified to work with a client. Anyway, four main stages of development over three production phases. Foundation, refinement, implementation, and progression. Before the process begins, every good game idea needs to be evaluated and a reasonable amount of time should be dedicated to deciding if the developer is capable of completing the project without assistance, as finding personal limitations often happens well into the development process. The shadow dev method does attempt to resolve these limitations with practical, though sometimes obtuse solutions that are offered in each of its stages. Foundation. The first stage is a bare layout of the project. A developer grabs a good game idea and fleshes it out, with the first emphasis being that they understand what their idea elaborates to. And doesn't require any kind of documenting, just a note that may include the game project title and its core idea. For example, Starload, procedural incremental mining game, with some microtransactions because I need to eat. The next step is your basic feature list. This is the bare basics to, to get to a prototype, as getting this out is key in understanding if a, de a developer should continue. Ideas that are nice to have but not fundamental get added to the secondary list called luxuries, with each feature of the triad gets applied. This helps to stop feature creep real quick when you think about your capacity. For instance, a developer who programs can probably make a player move in Unity without too much issue, but do they know how to key an animation to make it look like it's moving? Next steps are to assess costs and schedule if necessary, and set up project folders to start putting something tangible to a project. It's also recommended that a root folder titled Project Management is created for the feature list, as it will need to be referenced often. Refinement takes the previous feature list and elaborates and breaks down the features into workable tasks. Adding onto this, ideas that may help to implement these features and explore every angle that they require should be noted. And if they seem complicated, a developer can apply the triad and note which features need time to learn. Once that's done, formalize the requirements and add estimates if necessary. The next phase is building the architecture from a software point of view. Similar to a class diagram, it's the only sort of relationship planning made, so including art and audio in the node is recommended. After that, testing can be decided. As to what testing is used is up to the developer. Same with standards, though it's recommended that anything that is fast and easy should be applied. My camel case for coding, Hungarian notation if your adherence is high. Last of the refinement step is to adjust any scheduling you have. Self-imposed deadlines are beneficial but not necessary. Estimates from clarifying requirements can be used to improve this step. Implementation. The main production phase contains five primary steps, with an iterative step between five and six. First is preparing for a project. This mainly concerns hardware and needs a better name. Basically, the developer needs to ensure all required utilities and resources are accessible before committing to a project. Next is preparing game platforms. This regards cross-platform titles mainly but at its core is just the principle of making sure you can deploy to your intended platforms. Proving complicated concepts returns to the shadow triad. Any areas that are considered complicated or require time to learn should be dealt with first and developed in the manner of proof of concepts. These slices of functionality may require considerable effort and application of alternative methods to produce expected results. The methods involve things like playing with tactile objects, pragmatic shadow, use of card-based gnomic suggestions, and removal from a project. All have some degree of efficiency when applied to problem solving and passing deadlocks. Developing a prototype is fairly straightforward, though the shadow dev promotes the exploitation of the UX Dodson law to explore the use of stimuli to improve productivity. The curve is pictured here, and the study basically says an optimal amount of caffeine and a good tempo can have a significant benefit to a developer, though this varies wildly on task difficulty. Another proviso of this step is that swapping between disciplines is reduced as much as possible to avoid the cost of context switching. The next step is to acquire feedback. Personal attempts can help, but public and external feedback is always better. This and the next step bounce back and forth with appropriate testing and updating. Luxuries are added and the feedback step is initiated again. The last of the production phases is progression. And any developer that reaches this step should be proud of what they have accomplished, since it can all, all go a bit funny after deployment. First though, the finalization of any documents to release the game, user guides, installation instructions, legal documents, etc. Next is the optional step of public testing. This is highly recommended, but may not always be easy to facilitate.
The third step is a significant step and needs considerably more time than I have to present to detail. But it summarizes the think of your marketing strategy from inception of your game. Attempt to gain traction with social media and public awareness. Hit up the right reviewers, get a game website, get mailing lists, use a shadow pitch, post about your game's accessibility like colorblind options if you have to, and consider localization to open your game to as many people as possible. The last step, deployment, is more or less doing your research on the certification process for the intended platform, if there is one, and don't release your games around any major releases. Lastly, maintenance is more or less technical issues, but sometimes issues of ethics may arise and they should be treated professionally. Roles and responsibilities. The method itself requires no specific roles, but assumes that the developer is capable of learning and achieving what they set out to do. And the method's sole responsibility for its users is that if they answer no to the second question asked in the shadow triad, that they do not waste time in outsourcing and acquiring resources for that requirement. Quality assurance in the shadow method. Slightly flawed practice with one developer, but good quality can come from following the structure advised in the method. That comes back to relying on the developer for testing purposes, which can be difficult to do from a creator role. Hence the method relies heavily on feedback to ensure quality, which faults again as it still relies on the user to implement feedback. The cycle needs to be broken with a secondary view. Personal personnel dedicated to quality assurance would be the easiest option, as a developer's shadow cannot specifically do this task. Other limitations of the method. Well, apart from it being unproven and only catering to very specific developers, it understandably fails at all areas that solo developers fail at, particularly time management. Solo devs tend not to be on anyone's clock, which can make them slow on certain tasks. Quality control is an obvious issue, as well as long-term focus. The shadow method cannot assist with these failings in its current implementation, nor can it be scaled to more team members appropriately, as no division of tasks is advised. In justifying this methodology, traditional methods don't make the cut as they don't factor solo devs at all. Solo devs have only a minimal amount of time to address project management as a game gets developed and the method facilitates this by only documenting what is necessary. The greatest justification for this method is that out of the few methods advised for solo software developers, only a couple are for game development and those are orientated towards programmers and lack formal structure. In conclusion, while this is an original proposition, I personally believe the method needs to be tested first, then developed further, especially in the areas of art and design, since these are key to any good game. I have the opportunity with Starload to evaluate its functionality and refine the Shadow Dev method, which I would gladly recommend to any developer attempting solo game development. And that's my presentation. Thank you for watching.